Hi, I'm Jim Ackerman, known as the Marketing Wizard, but I don't want to talk to you about marketing today. What I want to talk to you today about is one of the most seminal business experiences I've ever had. I want to share with you the story of Horizon Services and my friend and client, Mark Aitken. I began my relationship with Horizon Services, then called Geiger Services, about a decade ago. Uh, they were about a $5 million company at the time, just a little bit less than that, in the uh, plumbing and heating and air conditioning business. And they enrolled in my coaching program for helping them get more customers who would pay them more money more often. Well, last year, in the midst of a tremendous recession in an economically ravaged part of the country, they just about topped the $35 million mark. Now imagine that, from $5 million to $35 million in a decade, that's, uh, that is absolutely amazing in the plumbing and heating and air conditioning business. And parenthetically, they give me a lot of credit for the success that they've had with marketing. But again, this is not a marketing story. A couple of months ago, I had the opportunity to go back and, and visit with what is now called Horizon Services. They'd moved to new digs since the last time that I'd met them. And when I walked into the building, I walked into a brightly lit reception area where I had to uh, buzz in, so to speak, to be allowed into the inner sanctum. And as I went into the inner sanctum, I was amazed to find freshly painted walls and with wallpaper, beautiful new carpet, no stains, brightly lit everywhere I went. They led me into a conference room to, uh, to allow me to wait for Mark Aitken, the uh, executive vice president of the company and my client. And when I walked into this um, conference room, it was like something you'd see in a very ritzy attorney's office. And then in walks Mark, my client. Now, how do you think the normal HVAC contractor is dressed? Not Mark. He walked in wearing a beautiful suit, and I'm sure it was an expensive one. White on white shirt, cufflinks, uh, tie perfectly dimpled. He looked great. I was blown away. He gave me a hug. I said, Mark, your suit. Then he started to uh, show me around his offices, and this was a tremendous experience. Uh, he took me where the inbound telemarketing calls are handled for people calling for service. Again, brightly lit, fresh carpet on the floor, uh, none of those old dingy uh, cubicles. These were the Lexan cubicles where plenty of light was allowed in. Everybody was professionally dressed, not suits and ties, but dressed in business casual wear that was comfortable, but no slacker stuff. He took me up and, and uh, showed me his training area, which absolutely blew me away. Several different brands of furnaces and air conditioning systems, fully functional on one wall, and on the other wall, a number of different plumbing configurations, again, fully functional. And he told me something very interesting. He said, anybody who works for us, who has any contact whatsoever with the public, is required to be in this room in training 100 hours a year, that's roughly two hours a week spent in training. How many companies do you know that do that in any industry? Well, as we went through the building, people came up and shook hands with Mark and patted him on the back and uh, greeted him, and he always greeted them back. But they were comfortable with him. They felt like they were a part of something important. They felt like they were on a mission. They seemed to be enjoying their jobs. He took me uh, around to the lot where several trucks of his were parked. Every one sparkling clean, maintained to the hilt, absolutely beautiful. Every technician dressed with a white shirt on, uniform shirt. Every one of them uh, fully identified, drug tested, and background checked. Then he took me out to the back lot where he had two gentlemen who were working on the uh, physical plant, the, the, um, keeping all the machinery running and those kinds of things. And after he introduced them to me and we turned around to go back into the building, he said, you see those two guys? They're ex-cons. He said, I'd never put them in a place where they'd have contact where the, with the public. But we're trying something new here to help these guys get back on their feet. Then it was down to the accounting offices. Once again, brightly lit. Everybody seemed to be happy. But he walked me into the room and there was a, a, a young girl sat at a a portable desk or a table. It wasn't exactly a desk. And up to the right hand side, there was a sign that said her name and underneath it said accounting assistant. Well, Mark ran over to her with a lot of enthusiasm and said, wow, isn't that exciting? Who did that for you? I love that. I love seeing that sign. 
as he lifted his hand to give her a high five and she turned around to return the favor, it was obvious this was a Down syndrome person. Mark said to me a little bit later, we can't do this for everybody, but for a few we can. And again, giving back to the community. Giving back? I guess so. As I talked to his assistant, she told me that they'd given over $50,000 in the last year to heart research. Then there's the 22,000 pounds of food that the employees raised together uh, to donate to a, a food bank. Oh, one other thing. Do you realize this is a company that sponsors 70 Little League teams? Not one, not seven, 70 Little League teams in a variety of sports. But it doesn't end there. For the last five years, uh, Horizon Services has given roughly $50,000 a year, $60,000 a year worth of free furnaces to people in the community, not a government program entirely initiated by Horizon Services for needy people who couldn't afford to repair or replace their furnaces. They were actually having them apply and give them a free furnace. And on top of that, $15,000 worth of free furnace repairs. In fact, Mark was being interviewed on a television station about that very program. He said an interesting thing to me, though, as he came out of that interview and he talked to his, his publicist and he said, I love the community service stuff, but, but if it comes to a decision between the business and the community service stuff, I have to go with the business because it's the business that funds all the rest of the stuff. You see, what Mark has is his priorities straight. Well, we went to, to uh, dinner together and I'm asking him about this philosophy. I said, who else in the industry is doing this, Mark? He says, I've never wanted to use the industry as my business model. My business models are the Ritz-Carlton, Mercedes-Benz, and American Express. What does that tell you about vision? And that's where this whole thing comes full circle. You see, they'd made this huge investment, a dollar investment, in a sponsorship of the Philadelphia Phillies. If you look out at center field at Philly Stadium, you'll see their sign, Horizon Services, right out there in the center field scoreboard. After the deal was first done, Mark said, we took the whole crew to one of the Phillies games. And as I looked out from that suite and looked at that uh, sign out in center field, and I had people coming up to me thanking me for uh, making this available to him, the, the people in his uh, business. And he looked over the scene with all of his employees enjoying what was taking place at that game. He said, I realized something at that moment in time that the investment in the Phillies wasn't about advertising or brand awareness or anything else. It was about getting people to come with him. He said, I realize that when I wake up in the morning every day, I have one job and one job only. It's getting 260 people to come with me. He says, my job is to provide a vision for this business and get everybody to come with me. Do you have that kind of a vision for your business? Do you have such a mission that people will want to come with you? That's what Mark says. People want to be part of something. They want to be part of a vision. They want to be part of something bigger than themselves. He provides that vision and then invites his employees to come with him and people in the community too. Now, what about the results? Well, obviously from 5 million to 35 million, the results speak for themselves. But specifically in the area of the recession, let's talk about that for a minute. Last year, while other HVAC contractors were closing their doors, his leads were up 50% and his revenues were up 15% and he was able to maintain double digit profit numbers where most people in his industry were working at, at levels under 5% profit. Could you possibly adopt a similar philosophy in the building of your business? You know, he set another double-digit growth goal, and I believe he's going to hit it. And when he does, I can tell you this, there will be a lot of people around Wilmington, Delaware, and Philadelphia that will be glad he did. I hope you can apply some of these principles to your business as well. And if you need help when you're marketing, please don't hesitate to contact me. Meanwhile, build your vision as I build vision for marketing, and come with me.